little chihuahua. Here's my reference photo for this particular painting. And what are we doing today? We're working on eyes and eyes only. Reference photo one more time. Let's paint. I'm gonna start with the outline of the eyes and I'm starting it with Payne's Gray. I do not go in with black and I'll explain to you in a minute why. But first, I just wanna welcome you to my channel. This is Mimi's Art. I am a, what they call traditional fine artist. I like to paint realistic animals and today you'll be watching me paint the eyes of this cute little chihuahua dog. So we're currently working on the outline and it is in Payne's Gray and that is on purpose. I am always a little hesitant to go in like all hard. I prefer to lay down like a mid-tone base to work off of because I'm still a little scared to actually go in very hard with my shadows, like dark, dark shadows. And that might change over time. This is probably just my insecurity going here, but um, this is how I started off this particular painting. It's just by Payne's Gray and filling in the shadow or dark parts. After that, I just um, have one color here going for the um, actual color of the eyes. And it's just, again, it's just the base layer to work off of. That's what I always do. You start with some base layers, mid-tones, and then you work your details over top. So I'm just filling in the white spots here that are supposed to have a brown color. There is a part of the inner corner of the eye that was actually showing some of the white of the eye. So this is not white. This is a bit of a gray tone. And I am just gonna lay that down there to work off of later on. Same goes for the reflection um, in the pupil. So it's just a little basic tone to work off of. And then I am going in with Mars Black here to actually deepen the shadows around the eyes. Reference photo is showing, you know, definite black around that. So I'm going back in with a small, tiny brush. And I am working on the outline of the eye. It's almost like putting eyeliner around the whole eye. It's kind of fun. This brush that I'm using is actually part of a uh, nail brush set. I ordered it off of Amazon. I'm sorry, I don't have an affiliate link or anything, but if you are looking for like very fine brushes, try some nail brushes. All right, and now that little bit of a darker line around the color of the eye before that white is showing there. I do love putting these lines in, like all of a sudden it just, it makes such a difference. And there's such small strokes, but it makes all the difference. And uh, I, I started working from the eyes with this painting. Obviously you can see the background, I already put the background in, but yeah, I like to work from the eyes outward so that I don't have a ghost looking at me. Here you will see me use like the stippling technique. That's what I call it. Just tiny, tiny little dots. Because, you know, once the eye, like the li eyeliner part, you can call it, like ends, it kind of bleeds into the rest of the fur. And it's never just a straight line. There's always a little bit of a transition. So that's what I'm trying to set myself up for here. Because I will go back in there with other colors in between and then it just starts to just like smoothly blend together and then it looks more like a texture. Now I am going in for sure in the pupil with Mars Black and make it as black as possible. And um, like I said, I'm a little scared to do that at the beginning. Sometimes I just some have to get over my fear and just do it. but. I find it easier to make adjustments or to correct things when it's like a Payne's gray base versus a Mars black base. And zooming in quite a bit, and I'm sorry if the quality kind of suffers a little bit, but you can see here what I'm doing is I got some brown on my little brush here, and I'm just putting in tiny little dots to create depth in that eye. You can do dots, you can do tiny little lines or squiggles. I find dots working really well for me and I just 
the color that I have on my brush, I will do that all over the eye and then I will switch color and go back and go in between or partially over and that's how I create that depth. And then I start working outwards from the eye. The eye is not finished by, by far. It, there is still detailing to be done, but I wanted to get the base down. Anyway, so we're going on to some fur along the side. What I do is I look at my reference photo and I just see, okay, where do I see this color? What direction is the fur going? Now you'll see me going up and creating a bit of a funky line here in a minute, because as you can see at the sketch, there is a bit of an eyebrow above that eye. And in the photo, that eyebrow is a lot lighter than the color that I'm working with right now. So I'm gonna work with the color that I have currently going on my palette and on my brush. And I'm gonna work somewhat around the eye to just have a lovely little base there. Here you can see me going up kind of over the part of that where the eyebrow needs to be. So it's gonna look a little awkward, I can tell you that, but it will it'll work out in, in the end, trust me. You gotta trust the process here. As long as you put your strokes in the direction of the fur. Now I had a slightly different color going, so now I go back into the eye and put that color also back in there, mainly by putting little dots in between the dots that are already there. Sometimes they overlap each other a little bit, that's fine too. And that just um, gives you that like lovely ice, you know, texture, structure. And it's no longer a flat one single brown color. It's starting to look more realistic that way. And with that same color, I'm now going in between what I had just done before that. This is more of like a, a sienna, burnt sienna color to go in between. There's a lot of different layers of colors going into this painting. This is a very lovely and warm color. I really love this color. It's just, it's so rich and beautiful. And again, just going with the direction of the fur as shown in the reference photo. I try to stay as close to my reference photo as possible. Sometimes I deviate a little bit. And the good thing about acrylics, you can put glazes on at the very end or kind of in between if you think you need to color correct. going back into that eye I think that's the third or fourth color now that's going in there as you can tell like that's what these realistic paintings are all about is building up of layers of colors to make it look as realistic as possible and that's how I kind of have to approach it like one layer at a time I've got one color on the palette I use it and then I use it wherever I want to use it for that particular painting session and then I move on to the next color now here I'm putting in some uh, black again because that kind of got lost and that's okay. You can go over it again and fix it. That's the beauty again of acrylics because they dry fast. So I just put that black little line back in to make a very distinct difference between where that white of the eye is and then the rest. Here I'm making some circular motions. Uh, a lot of this, the paint has already kind of sort of come off of my brush, but I still have enough on there to make a kind of like a softer type stroke. So it's not like a very harsh pupil line. It kind of blends in with the brown around it. And sometimes I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I'm just being honest. I just follow what I think I should do based on the reference photo. And if you make a mistake, that's okay too. It's acrylics are so forgiving. Just trying to make that darker color kind of sort of blend in a little bit with, you know, the browner color in the fur. Now 
I'm mostly working with liner brushes here. I think the first couple of strokes were more of a round brush, but then it was mostly liner brush from there. And I'm still just trying to outline that eye and just get a little bit of a fur and a direction going. And um, definitely will be more details added to the eyes later, but I really just wanted to lay down a base. Now you've been watching about 10 minutes of this right now. Um, the total of time that it took me to paint this particular eye was about 20 minutes. And then it's time to move over to the other side, which would also roughly take me about 20 minutes. So by the end of this video, it's about 40 minutes of painting and what it resulted into. So stick around till the end so you can kind of see, you know, what progress I made in 40 minutes. This part will be sped up a little bit because we're doing rinse and repeat. As you can see, I went in again with the Payne's Gray and now I'm going in, you know, with the brown and I'm just doing the exact same steps on the other side that I did in the first part. Why did I pick a dog? Because I've done a cat, I've done a jaguar's eye, I've done a frog. Way back when I did a horse, well, a horse's eye and a part of a horse's face. If you wanna see it, I'll put the link in the description. I'll pop up a card on there, but um, not my best painting, but it was one of those first few animal paintings. But anyway, I had not done a dog yet. So that's why I wanted to do a dog. Plus I figured, okay, I don't wanna do commissions. I better get a dog in my portfolio. I might get a client that might want, you know, a pet portrait of their dog. So if I don't have a dog to show, it's kind of hard to, you know, <laughs> for them to kind of think what a dog par portrait might look like. I did not film putting in the background on this. So if that's something you're interested in, like how do you make that background? Just let me know because then I will make a video uh, about that the next time I do a, a portrait or some sort of background. Not a problem, just let me know. On this side, there was not as much white showing from the eye, so you only see a tiny little sliver on that side. The eyes might look a little funny right now, also because of the angle of the camera, I think, but even when you look at the photo, the eyes are just, they are different. And I just wanna to stick to what I see, and that's it. I'm basically just copying what I see. So once this video is done, you will see just what the eyes look like. There is going to be more details added to the eyes way later in the painting, but this is what it is going to be for now. And I was quite satisfied with that so that I just had something friendly staring back at me. So there you go. That's what it looks like for now. The next painting will be about uh, the ear and some fur and how I did that. So I hope you enjoyed this video and I just wanna say stay happy, keep your peace, God bless you, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.